an inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations, more commonly known as the wealth of nations, is the magnum opus of the Scottish economist and philosopher Adam Smith. Published in 1776, it is a seminal book in classical economics and laid the foundational principles for modern economic thought. In this volume, Smith discusses a wide variety of topics that come together to explain how nations achieve wealth and how they can sustain economic growth. Smith starts by introducing the concept of the division of labor, which he asserts is the key to improving productivity and efficiency in an economy. He uses the example of a pin factory to explain that when the production process is divided into specialized tasks, workers become adept at their particular task, leading to greater output than if each worker created the entire product on their own. The division of labor, according to Smith, is limited by the size of the market. Larger markets allow for a more extensive division of labor, and hence, more efficiency and productivity. He goes on to discuss the importance of free markets and competition. Smith argues that when individuals pursue their own self-interest within a competitive market environment, they inadvertently contribute to the economic well-being of society. This is where the famous concept of the invisible hand arises, indicating that the pursuit of personal gain leads to the best results for society as a whole, as if guided by an unseen force. The role of money is also explored as a medium of exchange to facilitate trade, given the impracticalities of barter in a complex economy. Smith discusses the accumulation of capital and its relationship to the wealth of a nation. For Smith, the wealth of a nation was not measured in gold or silver, but in its production and commerce, what we today would call gross domestic product, GDP. On the subject of labor, Smith makes the distinction between productive and unproductive labor, suggesting that the wealth of a nation depends on the proportion of labor allocated to production of goods rather than services. He states that wages, rent on land, and profits are the three principal sources of income and argues for a harmonious relationship between laborers, landlords, and capitalists who all contribute to the productive capacity of an economy. Global trade is a major topic of Smith's work. He promotes the concept of free trade and criticizes mercantilist policies which seek to maximize exports and minimize imports through tariffs and subsidies. Smith argues that such policies lead to inefficiency and stifle the wealth of nations while free trade allows countries to specialize in the production of goods for which they have a comparative advantage, resulting in greater overall prosperity. Smith was critical of monopolies and other market restrictions that hinder competition and protect producers rather than consumers. He was particularly skeptical about the motives and actions of business interests, which often sought to manipulate the political system to their own advantage, an argument still relevant in modern discussions of the regulatory state. Regarding taxation, Smith presented four maxims for a good tax system. Equality, certainty, convenience of payment, and efficiency. He advocated for taxes to be fair, not arbitrary, collected at times and in ways convenient to the contributors, and economically efficient in terms of not being overly costly to collect or disruptive to economic activities. Smith also discussed public finance and the role of the government arguing that it should be limited but should include defense, justice, public works, and institutions that could not be profitably maintained by private enterprises. He saw a clear role for the state in terms of providing education, judicial systems, and infrastructure, which were necessary for the functioning of the markets and the enhancement of productivity. At a deeper level, Smith was expressing a philosophy of natural liberty, he believed that economic systems function best when individuals are free to pursue their interests in a market that is open and competitive. This philosophy extended to the political realm, where Smith advocated for limited interference by the government in economic matters. In The Wealth of Nations, Smith also elaborated on the concept of economic growth and its sustainability. He discussed the stages of economic development from primitive societies characterized by a lack of property rights and limited production to advanced industrial societies with refined legal systems and complex economic relations. He underscored that economic development was a dynamic process that was propelled by the human proclivity to truck, barter, and exchange. 
While the growth of an economy was important for national wealth, Smith also warned against the unchecked pursuit of wealth at the expense of broader social values. Beneath the surface of his economic theories lay a profound moral philosophy that considered the welfare of all citizens. Despite being a champion for free markets, Smith acknowledged the limitations of capitalism, recognizing that it could lead to inequalities and necessitate ethical considerations and governmental intervention in some cases. Ultimately, the wealth of nations is a comprehensive exploration of economic theory, practice, and policy that goes beyond simple prescriptions or policy recommendations. Smith offered an analysis of the economic system that, while promoting the efficiency of free markets and a limited role for government, did not ignore the complexities and moral implications of economic behavior. His work is both descriptive, outlining how economies function, and prescriptive, suggesting ways in which they ought to function for the benefit of the greatest number. Throughout the years, the wealth of nations has been both celebrated and criticized. Its insights into market dynamics, efficiency, and the role of government have influenced economic policy and thought for centuries. However, interpretations of his ideas have varied, and debates have emerged over the extent to which Smith's advocacy of free markets implies endorsement of contemporary laissez-faire ideologies. Adam Smith's vision in The Wealth of Nations has had a lasting impact on the understanding of economic prosperity and the organization of society. His work laid down the foundation for classical economics and provided a framework for future economists to explore the complexities of human behavior, market dynamics, and the role of institutions in economic life. Few works have shaped the field of economics as profoundly as Smith's comprehensive analysis of the nature and causes of the wealth of nations.